This conference will now be recorded. Hello everyone, we will start with a problem and after that there will be uh, the topics that we will discuss today. Periodic trends for different types of properties. There is ionization energy, electron affinity and electronegativity and there will be some related problems also. So here the problem that we are going to discuss it is related to isoelectronic species and what is isoelectronic species that we have already seen in the last class. The question is saying that the size of isoelectronic species, three species total given, chlorine having single negative charge, Cl minus, which is chloride. Then we have argon, it is neutral. And we have calcium 2 plus, which is metal cation. So all these are isoelectronic species that is already mentioned. And we have to find that the size of these three species affected by which of the properties. So different properties are mentioned in the options 1, 2, 3, 4. The first is azimuthal quantum number of the valence shell, then electron-electron interaction in the outer orbitals, principal quantum number of the valence shell and nuclear charge. So first we will see how they are isoelectronic. Chlorine, if you consider, that is a neutral atom, it is having atomic number 17. So when it is carrying minus one charge, basically total number of electrons 18. Similarly, when it is argon, its atomic number is already 18 and it is neutral here. And we have calcium. Calcium, when neutral, it has atomic number 20. So when it has lost two electrons, this is also having total 18 electrons. So all these are basically 18 electrons. So that is why they are isoelectronic species. Now, once we know this fact, and we have to find how the size is affected. So size is affected the first point given, given as a neutral quantum number. Now their electronic configuration is now same, which is same as argon. So argon having atomic number 18, it is basically 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, total 18 electron, and then 3s2. 3p6. So you can see here 2, then 8 and 8. Total 18 electrons. Now azimuthal quantum number of valence shell. Valence shell is principal quantum number 3. This is the valence shell. And 3p, if you consider the last electron where it is present, azimuthal quantum number for p, it is L. L value is 1 for p. But it has nothing to do with the azimuthal quantum number. Here you don't have to write even the electronic configuration. I am just writing it so that uh, we can understand why we are cancelling azimuthal quantum number. But basically you don't have to write the full electronic configuration. This much information is enough that they are isoelectronic species. So azimuthal quantum number, it is not important whether the last electron is in P orbital or D orbital or S orbital, that is not important. We just have to check whether they are having same number of electrons. Now, the second point, it is not correct. Electron-electron interaction. Now, as all of them are having same number of electrons, so obviously electron-electron interaction in the outer orbital. Outer orbital means, here you can understand it is 3s, 3p. So obviously that interaction is also same because electron number same, so this is also not correct. Then principal quantum number, now all of them are having same electron. So all are having basically the same electronic configuration. So principal quantum number, that is also same for all, for the valence shell. So this is also not correct. So here the only important point is nuclear charge. So this will be the correct option, okay? The next question. But this is also related to isoelectronic species. The correct order of the ionic radii of O2 minus N3 minus, then F minus. So these three are anion. Then we have magnesium cation, two plus charge, sodium cation, and aluminum. Now I have already just mentioned that it is isoelectronic, but when you will actually solve the problem, you have to check it whether they are isoelectronic or not. Okay, so in the previous question, it is already mentioned in the question they are isoelectronic. So you don't have to, if you are in a hurry, you don't have to check that. But suppose if it is not mentioned and anion, cation, both are given together. In this question, 
it is asking about the ionic radii and we know that ionic radii we cannot compare directly between cation and anion but if it is isoelectronic species that is all of them are isoelectronic species then only you can compare so there is a chance that all of them will be isoelectronic otherwise this question uh, it is not it will not be logical right so the correct order of this ionic radii three anion are anions are given three cations are given so let's check whether they are isoelectronic or not so oxygen it is having atomic number 8 and it has two electron extra so that means it will be having 10 electron then nitrogen atomic number 7 three electron extra so this is also 10 electron chlorine atomic number 9 one electron extra this is also 10 then magnesium 12 two electron less it is also 10 sodium atomic number 11 one electron less aluminum atomic number 13 one electron less so all of them are isoelectronic species now once we know this fact now solving this question is very easy so you don't have to think about the uh, electron electron repulsion or any other factor related to electron because they are having same number of electron so the only point that you have to consider is the charge and we know when there is negative charge it is having larger size and when it is positive charge it is having lesser size so since all these ions are having 10 electrons in their shell all of them are isoelectronic so that is the reason the more is the positive charge smaller is the ionic radius and obviously when negative charge is high size is also high so maximum negative charge is present over n that is nitrogen 3 minus charge then we have oxygen two negative charge then single negative charge so this is the order for the anions now come to the cation it is na plus first because it is having least positive charge after sodium it is 2 plus and finally it is 3 plus having minimum ionic radii so this is the correct option so both these problems are related to Uh, isoelectronic species and their size now we will start the periodic trend in different properties the first property that we have here is ionization energy sometimes it is also called ionization enthalpy so what is ionization energy that we have to know first it is defined as the minimum amount of energy required to remove the most loosely bound electron from the valence shell so see there are different points you have to be careful about these points first of all removal of electron not just from any shell it is from the valence shell which electron which is the most loosely bound under what condition when it is isolated neutral gaseous atom so suppose you are removing electron from calcium so it must be isolated calcium atom it must be in gaseous state and it must be neutral it should not be ca2 plus or any other charge okay so these points are important isolated neutral gaseous atom and also ground state obviously that is a minimum energy state no excess energy because if you are considering this under excess energy then what will happen electron may jump to some higher energy orbital but that we do not want we just want the normal condition ground state so ground state gaseous atom isolated condition and neutral under that condition when you are removing the valence any electron from valence shell the energy obviously you have to supply energy it is always uh, energy required so the process is basically as you are supplying energy it is endothermic process so minimum amount of energy required to remove electron in this under this condition that minimum energy is ionization energy it is also uh, known as enthalpy change so in other words how you can say it the enthalpy change for the following reaction as if it is any element m suppose m is any element in bracket it is mentioned g that means a physical state is gaseous you are applying ie1 ie1 means first ionization energy now why i am saying first because there may be second third also so first ionization energy means you are removing the first electron so that is why it is ie1 
and when you are doing so now you are getting the corresponding cation this carrying only one positive charge because you just have removed one electron and this is also gaseous state now just consider this reaction for this reaction the corresponding enthalpy change del h value enthalpy this term is actually from thermodynamic chapter so the corresponding enthalpy change for this particular reaction that is actually the ionization energy and ie1 it represent the first ionization energy now suppose you have started from this species and you are now removing the second electron so what do you have to apply you now have to apply the second ionization energy that is ie2 so for ie2 the definition we can give as the minimum amount of energy required to remove an electron from a unipositive cation so this is your unipositive cation that you have already you obtained in the first reaction now from this unipositive cation you are now removing the second electron so you have to provide this energy now what you will get you will get m2 plus gaseous state and one more electron lost so we have written ie2 in the left hand side of the equation because this energy you are supplying it is required energy it is endothermic process fine so in this way there may be third fourth and so on now remember second ionization energy that will always be uh, higher compared to first ionization energy now why it is so because once you have obtained this positively charged uh, atom m plus and from it is already electron deficient and now from electron deficient species you are further removing electron so obviously it is it will be now requiring more energy so that is why second ionization energy it will always be high and this value that is ionization enthalpy or energy it is always positive endothermic because energy is always uh, supplied it is required the second ionization enthalpy it will be always higher than the first one because it is more difficult to remove an electron from positively charged ion compared to neutral atom so you have removed electron from neutral atom in the first reaction suppose this is equation number 1 this is equation number 2 so equation number 1 this is not so much energy requiring process because you have removed electron from neutral atom but now in the second case you are removing electron from a positive already positively charged so that is why it is uh, having higher value and in this way successive ionization energy is always increase in this order i e1 then 2 then 3 and so on fine Now, if we want to know how this uh, property, I mean ionization energy, it is changing in the period when you are moving along the period or you are moving down, how it is changing. If you want to understand that, first you have to know these two factors. One factor is effective nuclear charge and the second factor is principal quantum number. Now, I will come to the second point first because it is easier to understand principal quantum number when it is high so just take the example of lithium it is from group one now it is from second period and the next period we have down the group you have sodium now both are having similar electronic configuration because both are from same group and we already know that when there uh, any species you take from same group they are having common electronic configuration and that common configuration is ns1 so as it is second period lithium will be having configuration 2s1 and for sodium it will be 3s1 so their configuration is same only the principal quantum number is different now n value is high for sodium because it is 3 for lithium it is 2 now when principal quantum number is high and similar type of configuration obviously with increase in principal quantum number there is extra added shell and that is the reason now you can easily remove the electron from the uh, atom now why it is so so i'm just giving a simple picture suppose this is nucleus and there is any or electron is moving here 
So suppose this is 2s. Now when it is sodium, it is obviously now far from nucleus. Now when electron is far from nucleus, and then there may be 4s for potassium and so on. So as the electrons are move, um, going far from nucleus, you can easily remove the electron. Because attraction is becoming less and less with increase in distance, that means with increase in principal quantum number. So that is the reason when configuration is same, that is in a particular group, when you are moving down because of increase in principal quantum number, for example, from so lithium to sodium to potassium, because of increase in principal quantum number, there will be decrease in ionization energy. So this is the effect of principal quantum number. Now we will come to the other point, which is effective nuclear charge. Now what is effective nuclear charge? And why it is effective? Why it is not, we are simply saying nuclear charge. So when you are simply saying nuclear charge, it is basically the charge that is present in the nucleus. So just take the example of lithium. It is having electronic configuration, one is two, uh, one is two, two is one, and it has atomic number three. Atomic number three means here we have plus three charge in the center. So that should be the nuclear charge because it is the charge in the nucleus. But why we are saying effective? We are saying effective, there are some reason for that. Because suppose your electron is here and there is also electron in the inner or white. Now what will happen? Obviously this blue, because of this presence of blue electron, the outer electron, it will not face the exact plus three charge that is present in the nucleus. There will be some screening effect. Okay, so that is, that is the reason. As it is not fully facing the nuclear charge plus three, which is actual charge, but it is not facing that because of the presence of this uh, inner shell electron, which is the blue electron. So that is the reason now it is effective nuclear charge. And how it is represented, you know, when it is simple nuclear charge, we write Z. And it means basically the atomic number. That is a total proton number, or you can say the total electron number. But when you are saying effective nuclear charge, now it, you have to use this type of term, Z effective, EFF, or you can say Z star. So this is the net positive charge, not the actual positive charge. It is a net positive charge experienced by an electron in a multi-electron atom. And it has to be multi-electron because there should be some electron in the inner shell which will uh, be having some screening effect. If it is not multi-electron, if it is a single electron, no question of screening, right? So obviously it has to be multi-electron. The term effective is used because nuclear charge experienced by a valence electron in this case, this red electron, in an atom, it will be less than the actual charge on the nucleus. And that is because of this shielding or screening, any of this term you can use. Shielding or screening of the valence electron from the nucleus by the intervening core electron. So all these blue electrons are basically intervening core electron. Now, if you look at this picture, it will be clear. So here, plus three charge is present in the nucleus. Now this is basically which system? Lithium. One is two, two s, one. So there is one s, there is two s, and in one s there are two electron. And in two s there is one electron. Now the electron that is present in <coughs> two s, it should feel this charge plus three. But see what it is actually, Filling, it is filling 1.28 charge. It is much, much lesser than plus three. And not just this electron. If you consider this inner electron, because of presence of two electron, it will also have some screening effect on each other. So that is why it is not directly filling the charge plus three. It is filling something lesser than this. So it is 2.69 for each of them. Suppose if it is simple, system that is hydrogen only one electron one is one configuration then there is no question of screening even that is in the same shell one is 
because of presence of two electron there is also having some screening effect rather uh, compared to the situation if you have only one electron just like hydrogen so in this picture you can understand that how the actual charge is not felt not just by the valence electron also the inert electron but here we are interested only in the valence electron not the inert electrons so because of these two electrons here the single electron that is present in 2s it is not uh, that is plus 3 charge is not felt by it but it is feeling 1.28 charge so this is the effective nuclear charge nuclear charge is plus 3 effective nuclear charge is 1.28 in general shielding is effective when orbitals in the inner shells are completely filled or with increase in n value so in this case it is 1s and maximum capacity 2 so this is obviously completely filled and higher is the value of n that is if you consider any other system suppose if you take potassium it is 4s1 so there is some field shell there is field 3s there is field 3p there is field 2s all these are present for potassium so there are so many uh, field inner shell inner shell completely filled higher is the inner shell completely filled more will be the shielding and obviously with increase in n then now why we are discussing shielding because we want to know what is the effect of this shielding on ionization energy trend so when shielding is very high increased shielding effect obviously z effective will be very low now z effective low means what now the valence electron it is not exactly feeling the charge that is present it is feeling something lesser than this and when it is lesser obviously ionization energy will be decreasing so with increase in uh, sorry with decrease in z effective that is when effective nuclear charge is decreased suppose there is no electron in case of lithium present in 1s then this 2s electron it will directly feel the charge plus 3 but when it is not feeling so it is feeling 1.28 only obviously you don't have to uh, apply so much energy so ionization energy is now decrease because nuclear attraction is becoming less and less because of this shielding so when shielding is high z effective is less and when z effective is less ionization energy is also less okay and vice versa that is shielding less z effective high ionization energy also high now what conclusion we can draw when we are moving across the period from left to right we know z effective increases but that is one point but we also know that principal quantum number that remains same so it has no effect so principal quantum number same but z effective is increasing so obviously when z effective is increasing z effective increasing means ionization energy that will also increase so this is across the period now what will happen down the group now down the group there is effect on both principal quantum number and z effective but remember that principal quantum number increase that factor is predominating over z effective so principal quantum number why it increases that we know because of extra added valence shell you are moving down from lithium to sodium to potassium you are moving from second period to third period so principal quantum number is changing from 2 to 3 to 4 so principal quantum number increase obviously now electron is far and far from nucleus you can easily remove the electron so this is one effect but you can say why what about z effective this is also increasing because down the group atomic number increasing but remember though z effective increasing but it is increasing slightly when it is down the group across the period z effective that effect is more significant but when it is down the group it is true z effective increase but it is slightly so principal quantum number effect that factor is predominating over z effective and ultimate effect is ionization energy will decrease so when you are moving down you can easily remove the outer most loosely bound electron okay now if we see the graph 
for group and period it will be clear here we have taken the group one elements lithium sodium potassium and we are considering the first transition energy which is present in the y-axis energy unit kilojoule per mole and scale you can understand lithium as you are moving down the group there is decrease fine now for lithium it is reaching here that means it is around 500 kilojoule per mole then for sodium it is something lesser than five okay if you take a particular period so here we have two periods period two which is in red color and third period which is in green color so this is for red lithium beryllium boron carbon atomic number is increasing starting from lithium three four five six and it is ending at neon and the next row that is for third period sodium potassium magnesium aluminium ending at noble gas argon so here you can see across the period but you know energy energy will increase so there is more or less increase though you can find some exception and this exception why we are saying that there is specific reason for that now see lithium to beryl beryllium there is increase fine but then there is a slight decrease in case of boron now what is happening here why this type of exception now the reason is if you consider the electronic configuration of beryllium atomic number is four so it is basically one is two that is helium configuration and after that it is two is two and if you consider boron it is one is two two is two two p one now removal of this electron and removal of any of this electron from 2s in case of beryllium which is more energy required if you simply blindly follow the trend that what we have seen here across the period it decreases sorry it increases then your conclusion will be boron should be having more energy but see you always have to check whether the electronic configuration is fully filled or half filled because that is very stable configuration so in this case though it is the general trend remember the word general is important when i'm saying general this trend these two points are basically general there may be exception always fine and the reason behind this exception is for beryllium it is fully filled configuration so when you are removing electron from 2s you are basically breaking this stable fully filled configuration obviously this is highly energy recording process but for boron when you are removing this electron now you are reaching a fully filled configuration that means removal of this electron is easier in case of boron though it is in the right hand side of it still similarly if you see when you are moving from carbon to nitrogen there is increase but when you are moving from nitrogen to oxygen there is decrease why it is so same reason for nitrogen the configuration is 2s2 2p3 stable half filled configuration but for oxygen it is 2s2 2p4 though oxygen is on the right hand side of nitrogen but still it is having stable half filled configuration so which is if you break this configuration because you are removing electron you have to put more energy okay so these are the reasons why we are having some exceptions it is not just for group 2 you can also find it for mg when you are moving from mg to al you will see there is decrease when you are moving from phosphorus to sulfur just analog of when you are moving from n to o now you are moving from p to s there is decrease okay so this is the trend now here we have taken uh, not just any group or period it is basically starting from hydrogen ending at calcium so total how many elements are there total 20 elements because calcium atomic number is 20 so here you can see helium this is noble gas i'm writing n for noble gas this is noble gas then argon noble gas so you can see when you're moving from left to right in the x-axis 
the peak points are at novel gases right and what is the minima minima is at group one so this is group one lithium then this is group one sodium this is group one so uh, potassium so the points that i want to mention you will find maxima at the novel gases so these are the maxima because uh, that means high ionization energy now why you are getting maximum for noble gases because they have fully filled configuration they will not prefer you disturb their electronic configuration it is already stable it is inert nature so that is why ionization energy is very high and why we are getting minima at alkali metals minima because the trend if you join all these lines it will be like this right so minima is at alkali metals that means low ionization enthalpy and why it is so because for group one the electronic configuration is ns1 and just before ns1 there is noble gas configuration i'm writing ng which means noble gas when it is helium sorry when it is lithium it is after helium 2s1 when it is sodium after neon it is 3s1 now when you are removing electron basically you are reaching the noble gas configuration which is a uh, facile process so you don't have to uh, provide very high energy so that is the reason ionization enthalpy is low and they, this this is the reason why alkali metals that is group 1 metals are so much reactive if you compare with other metals in the periodic table these metals are the most reactive and that is the reason you cannot find them in free nature uh, they will always you will always get them in compound form not in free form in nature their natural form is not the metallic state because they are very reactive they are they will always try to react with some other elements okay so that is all about ionization energy now if we solve question related to this your idea will be clear the question is saying that among these elements with following electronic configuration which element not given just electronic configuration is given which one may have highest ionization energy so here electronic configuration is given but suppose the question is designed in a different way where elements are mentioned so in that case what you have to do you have to write the electronic configuration but in this case directly it is given so it's fine now what we do when ionization energy is very high if it is having some stable configuration it is true that uh, across the period and down the group there are some general trend but here electronic configuration is given so just focus on that is there any stable configuration like half filled or fully filled uh, s orbital look at the first one it is 3s2 3p3 which element that is not important the important point is it is half filled stable configuration 3p3 so obviously it will be energy recurring process the next one is 3p2 so b will be having lesser ionization that is you don't have to put so much energy compared to a so a among a and b a is high now what about c in c also it is c it is uh, having some higher atomic number so now it is 4s2 4p3 this is also half filled and the next one now here it is easier because when you remove this you are reaching stable configuration which is not facile process but now you are stuck between a and c how to because both are half filled stable configuration right but see in which case when it is both cases half filled next you have to check in which case the electron is far from nucleus now obviously it is for 4p3 electron because it is 4p and the first option it is 3p so 3p it is closer to nucleus now closer to nucleus obviously you have to put more energy so b and d it is fine there they cannot be correct option but among a and c how to choose you just have to check whether the electron is far from nucleus or not so in case of cp3 it is closer to nucleus and that is why you have to put more energy so this should be the correct option the element having greatest difference between its first and second ionization energy this is interesting right 
Now, obviously, elements are given, so you have to write first the electronic configuration. So for calcium, just write the noble gas. It is having atomic number 20. Previous noble gas is argon. So it should be argon. And after, after argon, 18 configuration, two more extra electron. So it should be 4s2. Then for scandium, it is basically atomic number 21. So after argon 4s2, there is 3d1. Then for potassium, atomic number 19 after argon 4s1. And when it is barium, then it is in the same line of potassium, lithium, sodium, potassium. So this is also having similar configuration like uh, alkali metals. See, just check. It is in the uh, same line. That is potassium, rubidium. They, sorry, it is not in the same line of group one. It is actually group two. Fine. Calcium, strontium, barium. Now calcium, it is from uh, 4s1. That is uh, fourth period, right? Now the next one, calcium, strontium, fifth period, then it is sixth period. So this should be 6s2. Now I'm not writing it because it is obviously will not be the correct answer because it is already, even, even if you cannot remember that, that it is 6s2 or 7s2 uh, or 5s2, then also it's fine. This much information is enough that beryllium it is from group 2 and for group 2 general configuration is NS2. So you just simply you can write that in case you cannot remember. For calcium also you can write this is NS2 and scandium it is a D block element so there will be electron in 3D. But even if you do not know the exact configuration and for potassium also you can simply write that it is NS1. So this will only, in this way also you can solve the problem. So how you will do so? When you are removing the first electron, it is obviously easier in case of potassium. Because when you are removing this electron, you are reaching the noble gas configuration of argon. Even if you cannot remember argon, simply write Ng and then you write Ns1. Okay. Now, when you are removing electron from calcium, that is NS2, or you are removing electron from barium, that is also NS2. And then you are reaching the next configuration, which is NS1 in case of CA, also in case of beryllium, and in case of scandium, after removal of 3D1, now you are reaching the configuration of 4S2. Now you are removing the second electron. Now in case of second electron removal, in which case it will be very, very difficult. So when you are removing, okay, let me erase this and make it simple. Suppose detail configuration, you cannot write, then also it's fine, how you can solve it. So when you have reached NS1 for both calcium and barium, and you have reached 4s2 for scandium and you have reached noble gas configuration for potassium now you are removing the second electron in which case it will be very difficult obviously it is potassium it will be very difficult because now you have to break the noble gas configuration what noble gas that is not so important but you have to break the noble gas, which is really difficult process and the question is asking in which case uh, greatest different between first and second. Now, another it is another way of asking in which case the second ionization energy is very, very high compared to first. So that is why the difference will also be high. So in case of potassium, as you are breaking noble gas, this should be the correct option. And uh, why not the other? Because in case of cal uh, calcium and beryllium, basically you are breaking, you are removing electron from NS1, which is not so difficult. And in case of uh, scandium, you are removing electron from 4s. This is obviously difficult compared to calcium and barium. But remember, it is not difficult like potassium because in case of, case of potassium, you are directly breaking noble gas configuration. But in case of scandium, you are breaking 4s2 configuration, which is less difficult. 
So potassium will be the correct option. So here it is mentioned already. But again, I am saying if you can cannot remember exactly, simply writing the configuration like this that will also help you. Okay. Potassium is the correct option. Here uh, we have uh, another problem that is also energy energy related. The first energy energy of magnesium is smaller as compared to that of elements X and Y. That means X and Y compared to this, the magnesium, it will be having lesser ionization energy. So these two will be having higher ionization energy, right? It is smaller than X and Y, but higher than that of Z. That means in case of Z, magnesium, it is having greater ionization energy than Z. So these informations are given. You have to choose what is X, Y, and Z. So X and Y, higher energy energy compared to Mg, and Z, lesser ionization energy than uh, Mg. In the first option, we have chlorine, lithium, sodium. And this is for X, Y, Z, because respectively, right? So X, Y, Z, chlorine, lithium, sodium. Now, if you consider chlorine and magnesium, both are from third period, but chlorine, it is in the right-hand side of uh, magnesium. It will be having higher ionization energy. So this is okay. Then what about Y? Here, Y is lithium. Now, lithium is from second period and it is from group one. Now, lithium and magnesium, it is having some, uh, this type of relationship. That is lithium, next element is beryllium. Here we have Mg and here we have sodium. So, it has some diagonal relationship. But remember, though Mg, it is uh, in the next group, you can think it should have lesser value. No, no, that is ionization uh, energy, but you also have to remember that Mg is on the right hand side of lithium, and that factor predominates. So that is why lithium will be having lesser energy. And what about the last one? Sodium. Now sodium will be having lesser energy. Uh, X, Y, Z. Yes, sodium. So sodium, as it is here, so its ionization energy obviously it will be lesser than uh, magnesium. So Z as a Z, sodium is fine. Now sodium as a Z, that you can find in option two and three also. So you are stuck between these three. And here Z is chlorine in option four, but chlorine cannot be Z because Z is having lesser ionization energy and chlorine is not having lesser energy. So this option cannot be correct. You can cancel it. Now what about second option? Argon, lithium, sodium. But we have already seen lithium having higher ionization energy, that is not fine. Argon is okay. Now come to the third one. The third one is saying that X is argon. Obviously, this is fine because argon is having higher ionization energy than Mg. It is on the right hand side. Then we have chlorine and sodium. Now, chlorine and argon both are having higher ionization energy, and sodium is having lesser because it is Z. So considering all these points, this should be the correct option. That is option C. So if you consider the first energy energy order for third period, here we you can see all the third period elements. Um, sodium, after sodium, it is not because it is not according to uh, atomic number. It is according to the order of energy. After sodium, the next value high is for aluminium. Then it is Mg. So Mg expected is after sodium it should be mg but because of a fully field stable configuration of 3s2 it is having higher ionization energy compared to sodium and aluminium and then as it is so these two are actually x and y and this is z okay third option
the five successive anhydrization enthalpies of an element five successive that means that means starting from ie1 then 2 3 4 and ending at 5 so the first cation you will get x plus when you are removing one electron you are applying this energy then the next electron you are removing 2 4 2 7 third electron 3 6 5 8 so in this way finally you are reaching x 5 plus now the number of valence electron in the element in this element that you have to find from this information so when you look at this five ion addition energy 800 2427 then 3658 one thing you have to notice when you are moving from obviously when you are moving from ie1 to 223 it will increase that we know successive energy energy always increases because cationic charge is increased but just see when you are moving from 3 to 4 3650 it is 3000 something and now suddenly it is 25000 then the next one is also a total five figure i mean 30000 near about so these three they are quite close to each other but this is the point where you can get the maximum difference but you just have to focus on that area where there is maximum difference so when it is difference between IE3 and IE4, this difference is very high. It means removal of first three electrons, it is quite easy. But when you are starting to remove the fourth electron, that means this is not balanced electron. Its removal is not so easy. And that is why so much energy is required. Now it means that balanced electron should be three. So once you reach the configuration X3, it must have some stable inert gas configuration. And that is the reason there is jump after IE3 when you are switching to IE4. So it means that the valence electron must be 3 because the removal of first three electron, it is quite easy. But removal of the fourth electron, it is difficult as the difference is very high and it difficult means now it must have some stable inert gas configuration. That is why it is so much difficult. So this should be the current option. So after ionization energy, electron affinity. Now this uh, property, it is basically as if uh, reverse of this ionization energy. Because in ionization energy, what you have done? You have removed electron. And what should be the opposite process? If you add forcefully electron, that is actually electron affinity. It is also known as electron gain enthalpy because now the atom is gaining electron. So any of these two terms you can use electron affinity, how much affinity it has for electron, or you can say electron gain enthalpy. So the definition, see. Now it is completely the reverse definition of energy energy. Now it is defined as the amount of energy released. But remember in the bracket what is mentioned required in case of noble gas. So in most of the cases it is released energy. That means it is exothermic process. You don't have to apply energy. Just you have seen in case of energy energy. Then you have applied energy. But now energy is released when you are at uh, adding this electron but not it is not uh, released energy in case of noble gas because they are very inert in nature they if you take electron that is also difficult for them if you add electron that is also difficult for them they don't want to lose electron they don't want to gain electron they are completely inert okay so that is why though we are saying the definition as it is amount of energy released but remember it is not for noble gases it is then the definition is required for them. So that is it in the bracket it is mentioned required for novel gases. Now come to the actual definition. It is the amount of energy released when an electron is added to the valence shell isolated neutral gaseous. So this type of terms you have already seen. Isolated neutral gaseous ground state. In case of energy energy, after the process, what you have obtained, you have obtained some cation. But now you will get, get some anon. So it is a minus and see here electron 
gain enthalpy or affinity is mentioned in the right hand side of the equation because it is released energy that is it is mentioned in the right hand side now as it is released energy we use a negative sign suppose i am saying 30 kilojoule energy released so i will write it like this fine so the more negative the electron affinity value more negative means suppose i am taking another value 40 kilojoule per mole so it is more negative so more negative is the electron affinity value or you can if you consider the mod value that is also fine that more is the numerical value that means more energy is released we can say higher an atoms affinity for electrons so when more energy released affinity is high so suppose i am saying this minus 30 it is for atom a minus 40 it is for atom b and then i am saying that b is having more electron affinity than a like this so you can say this because it is minus 40 but don't think that there is a minus sign so minus 40 is lesser compared to minus 30 don't think in that way because when it is said that a is having uh, b is having more electron affinity we are just focusing on the numerical value not with the negatives be very careful so when i'm saying electron affinity high for some species it means the numerical values okay and if it is positive it will be mentioned separately because most of the cases it is negative only in few cases it is positive in case of ionization energy you have seen it is always positive it is never negative but uh, when it is electron affinity 90 percent cases you will get it negative but not always okay especially for noble gases so more negative electron affinity higher is the affinity for electrons for that atom variation of electron affinity is not so systematic as you have seen in case of ionization energy and it is you can understand but right now just i have said sometimes it is positive also so obviously it is not so systematic okay noble gases they are having stable configuration so addition of further electron it is completely unfavorable process so electron affinity is positive and what about halogens halogens they are from group 17 which is just before group 18 that is noble gases present so noble gas they are fully filled but when i am saying 70 general electronic configuration is ns2 np5 so they will have maximum electron affinity because just you add one electron they will reach the noble gas configuration which is stable so they will always try to be more stable by gaining one electron so it is highly facile process for them when you add electron so they readily accept electron to get the noble gas configuration and that is the reason in a particular period only it is the group 17 element that is having maximum negative electron affinity okay now what is the general trend here this general for this is very important because there is always exceptions right so generally when you are moving across the period electron affinity increases just you have seen in case of ionization energy same type of trend that means in bracket what is mentioned it becomes more negative and what is the reason two things you can consider first of all atomic size decreases now when atomic size decreases and uh, addition of one uh, what happens electron density now the electrons are very close to each other right so and you are further adding one more electron so there will be more repulsion so it is not facile process so sorry uh, what expression that is wrong i'm trying to say that atomic size decreases that means now the electron will be more when you are trying to add electron it is closer to the nucleus so you can uh, it can feel some nuclear attraction so that is why when atomic size decreases what happens this addition of electron that process becomes facile so that is the reason across the period it is increasing another reason is that effective increases and what is that effective why it increases that we have already seen in case of energy energy so because of this reason z effective and atomic size uh, these two effect electron affinity 
general trend is it will become more and more negative across the period what about down the group down the group atomic size increases right and most important point is this one z effective uh, decreases so because of these two things now electron affinity decreases that is when you are trying to add one more electron the process is not so facile that means it will become less negative and mostly another way also you can think it when there is more metallic nature because down the group metallic nature increases then electron affinity decreases and when metallic nature is less that is i mean to say non metallic elements which is mostly in the right hand side of the periodic table right hand side and upper part that is second period third period because even if you consider right hand side of periodic table and you are moving down then again metallic nature will increase so i am talking about if you consider this is a periodic table just if you focus on this part upper right corner you will see the most uh, negative electron affinity values you can find they are only but when you are moving down uh, it is becoming less negative okay so we will also continue this discussion today we are at the end of the session thank you for listening